stand for the things that we've seen. I want to restore that respect, that transparency, and that confidence to the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. Paul Penzone will forever be known as the man who took down six-term self-proclaimed toughest sheriff in America, Joe Arpaio, whose racial profiling policies like undocumented immigrant roundups in Hispanic neighborhoods led to court-ordered federal oversight. Evicting the previous administration was a big deal to the men and women in this department. I'm surprised and, and humbled by how many people have come to me and say, you know what, I didn't know what to expect of you, but I want to thank you because I feel better about being in this organization now when I'm in public with my family, with friends, that we're representing something that is good, um, and historically that wasn't the case. Penzone started with Phoenix Police in 1988. He worked his way through the ranks to sergeant with seven years in silent witness before running for sheriff of the fastest growing county in the country. Coming up on the last day now. How's that feel? That uh, feels good. I appreciate He made it. some power it's moves as soon as he took office. Starting today, that circus ends and these tents come down. He shut down Tent City and opened a drug rehab program for repeat offenders. But it didn't take long to realize he couldn't control all the moves. Did you ever get to fully run this department? No. The case is over and we're here to uh, uh, monitor the agency's compliance. That court-ordered federal monitor Penzone inherited from Arpaio is the same man who also controls DOJ oversight of Oakland police. It's been 20 years, and they've gone through 14 police chiefs. Why would you fire yourself from a job that pays almost $400 an hour? It doesn't make sense, so there has to be another layer. He says we need more oversight of the monitor who controls a huge part of the sheriff's budget and resources. I can't even remember a time when we actually discussed the issues of public safety. He's appealing a civil contempt charge for not clearing internal investigations faster, even though he has 28 more positions assigned to compliance than investigating general crime. The monitors already cost taxpayers more than a quarter billion dollars with unnecessary line items like this $97,000 bill to lease a floor of this downtown Phoenix high rise. It's been vacant three years. There's a lot of waste in here and it's unacceptable, unforgivable. And that's just a fraction of his frustration. But to be performing at a 94 percentile for three consecutive years in every category of two court orders that have over 200 paragraphs in them, that every one of those things, and if you fall short at any given time, then we start the clock over again. That is unrealistic. He says the push to defund police has shifted to a nationwide effort to destabilize law enforcement, taking power away from local departments. The civil division of the Department of Justice is not in good faith. And that's his warning for Phoenix police facing a voluntary consent decree with the feds right now. Don't be intimidated into making the wrong decision because you will not be able to undo it. If you destabilize this community because you put two of the biggest agencies in the community under federal court oversight, crime will thrive here. That will be the most devastating thing that could happen in this community. Do you see an end in sight? Obviously not under my tenure. On top of that, and managing the day-to-day -day of nearly 3,000 employees and 6,500 inmates at half a dozen jails, he had a whole host of other challenges to tackle in his two terms. Black Lives Matter protests, the COVID lockdown and staffing shortages. We're not trying to break in. We just like to watch you count the ballots. Security for election integrity and threats and the fentanyl epidemic. Penzone paid $2.5 million to install body scanners at the jails after a series of inmate overdose deaths and a corrections officer got caught trying to sneak in drugs. The idea that a handful of pills that makes its way in can take a handful of lives like that is, um, can keep me up at night. He says our jails are a reflection of society. They doubled Narcan to reverse opioid overdoses in the last year and now have canines making rounds to sniff out the problem. So what's your advice for the next person coming in? Sign up, jump in the seat, it's an awesome ride. It's been incredible. I could hold on to it until the voters kick me out, but it's the right time for me to leave. What's next? So I have an incredible opportunity. I will still be engaged in the community where um, I'll be going to work for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona. I'll oversee their community programs and their charitable giving. He's looking forward to a new beginning, proud of his legacy in law enforcement that I was dependable, that the community knew what to expect of me and that it was about law enforcement only. No politics, no nonsense, no, um, you know, sideshow. Just if you need us, we're going to be there for you.